Hello, Jolter viewers. This is Zav Guardian, welcoming you back to Out of the Park Baseball 24 with the Oakland A's. And there's apparently quite a few interesting players on the waiver wire. Excuse me. Uh, last season, we completed a fairly improbable run to the World Series, which is very exciting. Uh, but we're trying to be even better this year. Uh, we are led by Max Clark. Jacob Kendall has taken over at shortstop. Um, and we're going to see what he can manage in a full season. Uh, we still have our old friend Peyton Green. We also have Alejandro Campos uh, with another one of his. Um, I am somewhat concerned about his... One moment. I'm somewhat concerned about his long-term viability as a player. Um, because of his skill set, he has to hit for an average and hit plenty of doubles if he's going to be a good player. Um, so we'll see what happens with him uh, over the course of the season. Uh, Davin Gaddison, who had a, a pretty decent season, all things considered, last year, returns, offering us a bit more stability. None of our corner outfielders are world beaters. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind for later on. Mike Neely uh, hopefully can take another step forward because his style of play is exactly what we need in order to be a truly uh, top-tier uh, team. Our expensive, quote-unquote, free agent, uh, Mr. Riley Green, was brought in to give us a little bit more thump in the, in the corners. And we'll see how he does. Uh, new import Carter Smith uh, is playing second base, not by choice. However, our good pal, um, Mr. Max Muncy, is out for the first few weeks of the season. And lastly, we brought in Giants legend Joey Bart to be our new catcher. Um, he's certainly nothing spectacular, but he is a baseball player. Uh, Pitching-wise, we're bringing back a lot of last year's staff. Oh, this is that glitch. Whenever you name somebody, like, for starting somebody, the game always makes them the ace. Which is weird, but okay. So it's Egan, Skeens, and Painter, and Moda are all old friends. And we added Ian Anderson um, to give us a... A nice, really solid starting pitcher. Um, our bullpen is quite different, though. Um, our long-term closer, uh, who Sam have already forgotten, uh, that's because he's dead to me now. If we look at the pitchers... Uh, oh, Cusick, I guess, is the guy I was thinking of. Okay. Anyways, yes, our long-term closer is now departed. Oh, one season. Uh, replaced by Giovanni Moran, um, who was one of our other big free agent signings. Um, please only do the head scout. I don't trust this OSA bullshit. Um, our bullpen isn't exactly elite tier, but part of the issue is your weird decision that Romero Yano, despite his incredible potential, can only be used as a specialist. Like, my dude, he's amazing getting out righties, too. I'd almost rather Michael Perez become the specialist guy. Um... And the thing is, you can only force him to be a closer or a starter or a reliever, so... I have a big issue with this, but I'm also willing to let it go for right now. Uh, this is a bullpen that's relatively deep, but it's not exactly elite. Uh, Melvin Hernandez might be an important key to this bullpen success. Oh, I need to put Joey Bart on the 40-man, don't I? There you go. Anybody else I miss? Nope. 
I'm gonna try an experiment. If I take you off of four things as a starting pitcher, are you still gonna use him as a starting pitcher? Yes, you just put him fifth instead of first, and that's all I wanted. Amazing. Okay. Um let's uh let's keep this trend going. Before we do that though. Okay, so we got some decent pitching uh, in the high minors, some okay outfielders. Hmm. If I decide to prioritize Thump, I do have a few out corner outfielders I could call up to give us a little more power. Oh, we don't have a power hitter right now. We have several players who are fairly good at hitting for power, but we don't have very many that can hit like 40 home runs. But everyone can probably hit double digit home runs. So I guess that's a trade off that we're making. Um, are there any contracts we need to start thinking about before we start playing meaningful baseball games? Not really. Um, I'm not really seeing any contracts that I necessarily want to extend. Uh, Griff McGarry has been fine. I have very little complaint about him, but I do complain about paying $4 million for him. Uh, I will happily let him go at the end of the year. Um, I'm not even going to offer him a contract unless he'll take a pay cut, which I doubt he will. Yeah, he wants, he wants more money. He's not going to get it from me. Full stop. I wouldn't mind a second year of Ian Anderson uh, if he'll take a... Wow. Really? Like, I know we've got a, y a lot of young pitchers coming up, but Moda's quickly pricing himself out. Locking down Ian Anderson for $2.4 million for four years actually seems like a really reasonable decision. Uh, I'm going to offer you a team option in year three, though. Done. Uh, that I'm perfectly happy with that deal. Perfectly happy. Moran, I don't know if I want to bring him back or not. What would he want to come back? Oh, he doesn't like Katze. Okay, well, that's fine. Are there any players I'd like to try to scoop up and get a cheaper contract signed for? I value Neely a lot, probably more than I ought to. What is he looking for in the neighborhood of a long-term contract? <clears throat> it's too much. Eleven million is too much for a first baseman. He doesn't have a lot of power. Um, keep in mind our current. Player payroll is $85 million. It should be higher. Um, I don't really have anybody I can invest more heavily in, though. We can maybe take on a bad contract if we need to to try to get ourselves an interesting player. Uh, somebody pointed out I probably didn't put Flores on the 40-man. That's a fair point, uh, but I didn't want to take any chances. Um, the interesting player that we're going to keep a very close eye on this year is Mike Howman, mostly because of Mr. Max Clark. Max Clark's contract range is going to keep going up. And I'm not super convinced he's going to be worth it. The question isn't, are we getting good value for the player? The question is, given the constraints of my laughably tiny payroll, are we getting a good value? Um... <laughs> Really? Brayden Egan wants like 10 million a year? What the hell, man? 
Hmm. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead now and advance time. Very nice. And that is, that's a wonderful bargain. It gives us stability in the rotation. I love everything about that. Uh, you two can be demoted. We could really use a quality catcher. I just don't know where we get one from. Uh, Max Muncy is ready to come back, which is great. I didn't really want Carter Smith in the big leagues. I'm going to send him right the way down to double A. And bring back Maximum Muncy. we're kind of scoring this year which is nice that was that's not a big issue for us historically so something must be going okay uh, jacob kendall's getting better that's lovely Uh, Tyler Soderstrom, has he had a nice career since he abandoned me? I mean, I traded him. I guess I can't be too mad. Uh, 38 home runs seems pretty good. I don't know who our Hall of Famer is, actually. I guess Skeens is a fair bet because he both has a long-term contract and is a really good player. Um... So if we take a quick look at his career stats already, they're not ultra impressive, but I'm sure that'll change over time. Needs my boy needs to get some wins is what he needs. Um hmm. Now nah, Dan Tebow's actually pitching fairly well at the moment. So I'm not going to mess with that. Okay, cool. Um, only a month into season. I don't know nothing about nothing yet. Let's go ahead and it take another month before we make any big changes. I did not remember that, but that's cool that I did. Alejandro Campos is second in the league in stolen bases. That's fun. Uh, Egan's movement's getting better. Swanson is improving. Um, some other guys are getting better. Alberto Flores is throwing harder. That's incredible. Carter Smith is getting better defensively. Why the fuck is Baden Fairbank not starting? Whatever. I, I can't be bothered to get hot about that. Uh, Noah Malone is getting better. Mike Howman is declining. That's a very bad sign for us. I'd actually had really high hopes for him. Um, Oh god, it's happening here too. Ismael Ibarra has collapsed in his potential. I don't know the answer to this. To be perfectly honest with you, um, this is probably just the way the game works, which is fine. Um, but it is frustrating to get all these high potential players and none of them actually get to keep it. They all fall flat, but whatever. Um, okay, we have some meaningful at-bats now. What do we know? Well, first of all, we already know Jacob Kendall is pretty incredible. <clears throat> Mr. Kendall has already generated two and a half wins above replacement. And it the season has just started. Um, Max Clark is doing very nicely at the top of the lineup, uh, providing a good combination of offense and defense. 
this is unusual for him. If he can carry this, if he can carry this pace the rest of the season, it's going to be massive. It's going to really help us as a team. Um, Campos is still not doing the things he needs to do. This is becoming an issue. When you only have one skill, you have to be amazing at that skill. I mean, I guess the fact he steals bases adds value. But this is getting absurd. This is getting absurd. Uh, I can't keep a number three hitter that occasionally gets on base. That's not a good system. Uh, Peyton Green looks great. Um, no complaints there. <clears throat> Gaddison is certainly not that thrilling. He's okay, I suppose. He's right around league average. Uh, Mr. Mike Neely is performing fairly well. Could be better. I don't like the walk rate being as low as it is, but it's certainly not terrible. Riley Green has been very nice indeed. Max Muncy is okay, and Joey Bart is nothing. Uh, the, the forever quest to get competent catching apparently must continue. Ishmael Moda is having himself a terrible year. And you did what I fucking thought you'd do. Quit pulling him out of the rotation. That is not what he is here for. Just stop. So now he's got to be the fucking ace because you don't fucking know what you're talking about. I don't give a shit what Griffin McGarry wants. Griffin McGarry stays in the fucking pen. Weirdo. Um... What is Moda's major malfunction? I mean, the home runs are getting a bit ridiculous. Um, yeah, my dude, you think you're getting 10, 7 million? It's not going to happen. Uh, I will find somebody else. Egan should not be relieving. Uh, the rest of this seems more or less okay. What is your obsession to make? I mean, I guess McGarry isn't a terrible starter, but I think he's much more valuable to me in the bullpen. Uh, at least for the moment. Although Egan is pitching poorly. Maybe I do just trust my... You know what? I'm going to trust Mark Kotze, for better or for worse. And if he thinks McGarry can handle being a starter, we'll give it a try. Um, okay. Moraine is not working out his closer. My guy likes giving up homers, and he also enjoys not striking people out. But his walk rate is really tiny, so I'm hoping that the rest of this will come back together, and we can see how that works out. Uh, we're actually the second best team in scoring runs this year, which is wild to me. Uh, starters, it's Moda. Defense isn't incredible, but I don't really need it to be fantastic. I do need more offense out of my outfield, though. So there's a couple of options here. One option is to, say, promote Joshua Baez. Or just play Al Monte. Oh, Camus is playing in right. Okay, so he's playing in left. Oh, Riley Green. Okay. I mean, Al Monte actually has, like, overall talent. Campos is just me run fast, me hit. Try to hit for average. I don't think he's a good fit. I truly don't. I think we're holding ourselves back by keeping him in the lineup. Well, especially when I could then call up um, probably Joshua Baez to go some extra pop off the bench. And maybe even throw the odd inning here and there. Um, so I think we're going to trade Campos and see what kind of value we can get for him.
I'm looking for some greens first. If I don't see any green players, then I will... There's one. Uh, what? I get it that he's not the most polished kid. But raw potential is always worth taking a risk on. But I will keep looking for the moment and see if there might be a better fit for the short term. I'll talk to John Santana. Nope, I got plenty of players like that. Jeremy Rodriguez is fine, but hardly amazing. My question is Oh, we don't actually we don't actually know that much about this kid. Oh, let's get a scouting report. And once I get that, then we can about whether he'd actually be a good fit. Eh. All right, I'm gonna sim until we get that report. And then, did I get the report yet? No, I'm still thinking about it, okay. Look, he's already lost potential just by me scouting him. I mean, he's still the best player that was on offer, like, in terms of future considerations. So I'll give you Campos for that. I definitely want to see if I can try to get another player or two, though. I'm sure I can't get Largo Corticelli, which would be pretty incredible if I could. Can I? No. That's fair. Um. Mm. Wow, your cupboard is actually fairly bare in terms of prospects, isn't it? Like, you've got some really top flight pitching. Oh, but you don't much only offense. What about Jorge Arona? I would actually give a little bit more if we could get Arona. No. <clears throat> I mean, there's really no downside to this. Um, even if Figueroa doesn't work out, um, I think he's got a really high ceiling as a reliever. And he's a big enough kid that I expect him to add a bit of velocity. Uh, which he already has been. So I think this is sensible, and I'm going to make the trade. I'm going to call up Joshua Baez. And then I want to see how you set the lineup now with him gone. What? Why are we playing Everett Johnson again over Max Muncy? I mean, I guess Muncy is just DHing. It's like he isn't playing. So it's just to put Devon Gaddison in right field. I mean, we'll try it. Uh, we'll see how he does. His early returns aren't that exciting to me, but maybe he'll end up being a worthwhile contributor. Um... But yeah, a player like Campos is just way too flaky. Unless they play a, a, like a position like... Unless they play a good defensive position, I don't really like players with that profile. Um, not until they've got enough of a track record, which he didn't have, of producing that high average uh, year in and year out. And batting average is such a variable skill. Like, you can't trust it. Um, um, nothing too wild here. Mike Swanson is getting better, though, which is very good news. Okay. I 
I mean, you're below replacement level. Why would I want to extend you? You're fine. I'm not saying you're a terrible player, but you're the definition of replacement level. You're only here because the players like you. Um... I don't think so, my guy. Unless you're going to take a fairly minor rate. Eh, it's not that much money. I still think it's sensible. I don't think it's a good idea to spend money on that. That's just how I feel. What is it going to take for you to stop playing like very specific players that's something i don't understand always in this game like i don't always understand why certain people get so many chances from a particular manager like why do you love davin gaddison so much or devon gaddison i guess wow jacob kendall fucking hates you what did you do to him katze Oh, you favor speed to power. Oh, oh, interesting. And Gaddison is faster. I like the idea of Gaddison. I truly like the idea of Gaddison. What I don't like is playing him over Almonte, who I actually think is the better player. I think we have to roll with Almonte. I'm gonna I'm gonna force you to start him in right field. Because your weird obsession with Gaddison. Uh, just because he's kind of fast needs to be fixed. And this also gets a Johnson out of the lineup, which is very important to me because he's not a very good hitter. All right. Uh, pitching is settling down, I guess. Yeah, Moto's just getting lit up this season for whatever reason. I can't keep carrying his inflated ERA on my roster, especially as Mike Swanson is developing. I'm wondering if trading him to get something in return is actually a sensible move. Um, I still don't know if you're ready for the bigs yet, though. Swanson is the thing. Man, Painter has been a giant disappointment. Like, I'm basically paying for a mediocre pitcher who just he's not even a bad pitcher he just isn't getting the most out of his talent level Um, let's trade Nelson Cabrera, actually. This might be something I can get a decent prospect for in return. So I meant prospects and regulars. I do want to look at some regulars, too. Wow, they really keep wanting to get rid of Kevin May, don't they? I don't think so, guys. I'm not taking on that contract. Don't be stupid. 
I like Jonathan Norris a fair bit, but I don't like his low control. I don't think it's going to make him a reliable starter. I'm not really looking for a bullpen upgrade, or I'd actually think about Francisco Morales. Now, what we need is we need other things. Mm. Mm. Uh, I absolutely am not taking Curtis Mead for that amount of money or for any amount of money, really. There's a lot of really good relievers, uh, but unfortunately, that's not really what I'm looking for. I'll take a marginal prospect, though, if we can find one. Uh, Engels Arena. Eh. Tempting, I suppose, but not thoroughly interesting. Uh, Dewar Tovar, good on base percentage. Meh. A glove that'll only ever play in a corner. I mean, Jonathan Linares is a good defensive catcher. I guess that counts or something. Um, hmm. Mm. Mm. It's just a lot of players that it's hard to find anything too exciting about. Meh. I think I'll just keep Carrera and we'll figure something else to do with him later. better catching what do we have on the free agent market or what do we have on the trade market at catcher but I can't have Gabriel Moreno although he would definitely be high up in my estimation You're such a weird player. I kind of respect it. Why are you grumpy? You're grumpy because your team sucks. I mean, you're not helping, but... I'm not spending that much money for a catcher. That's obscene. What would it take me to get Anthony Siegler and maybe extend him? Let's find out. Okay, it's not going to take much at all to get him, which is pretty great news. You said you want like a mid-tier prospect. How about a shortstop that doesn't shortstop all that well? 
Okay, next step. In order for this trade to be worthwhile, I need to get Siegler to sign an extension. Not a gigantic one, but to give me some stability at catcher. He wants a one-year deal, does he? What about a three-year deal? I'll give you six million a year for three years. That's fairly reasonable. Okay. <clears throat> Just because I need that stability at catcher, and I haven't had it in a very long time. And then we're going to trade Joey Bart uh, for any interesting prospect that we might be able to grab for him. Really? Nobody? What if I soak his entire salary? I will pay for you to take him off my hands. I can get Yoiver Ruiz. And that's it. It's better than nothing. Done. I know he was like a big dude and people liked him and he was very popular, but we needed what was better for us longer term, which is getting a quality defensive catcher who can also generate at least some offense. Um... I'm going to send Johnson to the minors, and we're going to let Ruiz be the backup infielder. Get some more pop off the bench. Do we trade Gaddison? Like, I want to like him, but his fucking obsession with playing him just because he's a little fast is just weird to me. Now, I'm probably being a little bit unfair, um, and I bet if we give him some more time, he'll show us he can actually be something special. But for right now, man, I'm almost tempted to force you to bench him just to give some other player a chance to play. But we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I'm sorry, the fans. I'm sorry that people are sad about losing Joey Bart, but maybe we should try hitting better. Okay. Yeah, it's because a lot of our players aren't working out. That's why. We keep seeing people's prospect values crash. Because for a while, we weren't investing enough. We weren't investing enough into our uh, player development system, which is on me. Oh my god. All of them want personal attention. Fine. Fran Reardon low-key sucks. Like, he's not a good coach. Could be holding people back. Uh, Brian Corey can have an extension. That's fine. I'm going to let Brian McCarn walk, too. Uh, wow, our minor league coaches are not very good, are they? Rosales actually is. I do want to keep Rosales, especially because it might be promoting him to AAA in the very near future. Uh, Chris Smith is fine. Matt Young is actually quite decent. Matt Young will keep around. I guess keeping Chris Smith around for one more extension isn't the worst idea, but I kind of want to get really good coaches to help with the development issues. Uh, Manuel Alvarez definitely gets an extension. Jose Santana gets all the extensions. He might very well end up being a major league hitting coach in the fairly near future. Uh, Dave Daniels is an incredible pitching coach. We definitely want to keep that around. Ahem... <clears throat> Vincente Brett. Yeah, our lower tier coaches are actually much better than our higher tier ones. Which is an interesting approach. Uh, Skip Shoemaker is fine. I don't hate having his experience deep in the minors and maybe even getting a chance of being a base coach. Uh, Darwin Barney is fine. I'm not going to fight with him.
Uh, Cooper Goldby is actually a really good candidate for a promotion. Uh, he's actually a pretty solid manager at developing people. Right? Yeah. He's a good fit for the low miners where... Yeah, we have some really good coaches. They're just all way too low in the system. So I think there's definitely going to be quite a bit of movement in the offseason. Uh, whether that's firing coaches or throwing them or whatever. Jose Vicente needs to be a manager. This man needs to be a manager somewhere. He's not as well suited to be a hitting coach. Okay, Jason Wurch, you're my dude. I think you've done an amazing job with a scouting director. I'd like to keep you. Done. Ron Whitmire is fine, but I'm wondering if do I want to keep him? Our chemistry right now is pretty fantastic. Like, there's some value in not fucking with that. I definitely want to keep our hitting coach. I definitely want to keep him because he's so good and so young. I definitely want to keep Arias around. He's due for a big raise, but my friend, he has earned it. The benefit of getting rid of Whitmire is we could potentially find an even better uh, coach to fit. And Whitmire might retire soon anyway, so I think I will let him go ahead and walk. Um, so that's our coaching decisions made. All right, let's go up to the draft. You would offer me Eliezer Hernandez. The question is why? What purpose does such a player serve? And obviously he's got a cool name. That's not nothing, but it's also not incredible. Did I just give you Bryce Clavin? I feel like I just gave him to you. Yeah, why would I be like, oh my god, I could get him back. Ah, oh, the cavalcade of crappy pitchers. It must be trade season. Uh, didn't I get a supplemental pick this year? Yeah, from Shane McClanahan. That's good. All players. Okay. So there's some really good pitching talent here. Is there anybody that's fairly major league ready? Eh, not really close to major league ready, so they might as well go for the prospect. Okay. So it seems like a really, really deep class in pitching. Which actually... So there's a fairly good chance I can get a pitch in a supplemental round. How good is Chris Wenzel? Okay, this man has redonkulous potential. Like, we're talking franchise cornerstone corner outfielder. And he's got a high work ethic. I, I think this is a no-brainer. I think he's the choice. Drafted. Plus, we drop under a slot means we can grab somebody else that might be a bit more expensive. Uh, one of the starters is left, which is Caleb Luris. He's a lefty with good stuff, movement, and control. Three good pitches, decent stamina. The velocity isn't ideal. That's what gives me some slight pause. He might be able to improve that. He's very adaptable. He's also kind of dumb. Uh, maybe we don't take the dumb pitcher. Angelth Chandler. Big time pop. Not an amazing catcher. But that power will play. The question is what's more likely to happen? Is he likely to lose that power? <clears throat> or everything else catch up a bit. Hmm. Hmm. 
I feel like the lowest I'm willing to go is Chandler. Like, I think Chandler is probably the best pick. Wait, did I have two first-round draft picks? How have I already taken two players? Oh, no, I've only taken one. I've only taken one. Okay. Man. This is a hard bet. This is me basically saying, I think he's going to hit so many home runs that he's going to make up for his average catching. I don't think that's a good bet. Why do you have to be fucking dumb, dude? I mean, Steve Carey is plenty smart. He's also not an amazing hitter, though. Um... I'll take Loris. I don't love it, but I think it's a fair pick. All right. If Chandler falls to the third round, I'm going to take him. That's where I think his ceiling is, his floor is for me. <clears throat> and I'll hope that he can figure out things in the minor leagues that he hasn't figured out yet in the majors. So that's what I like about a guy like Pete Howell. Um, he's nothing fancy, but I think he'll develop quickly. And I do like his uh, his arm. Let's go ahead and grab Howell. I said if he was here, I would draft him. Here we go. Uh, what is so impossible about you? I'm not going to say you're a bad player, but I do think you're highly overrated. I think we'll keep an eye on you for when you get to college, but I'm going to shortlist you. But I'm not going to take you as a high schooler. I don't think the package is, is worth it. Uh, no, you dumber than a post, my guy. Uh, maybe. Good adaptability and work ethic. Maybe. This is a really bad class, actually. Like, this is not a class that fills me with joy by any stretch of the imagination. Bowman is a fairly good risk of somebody who might improve his arm a bit. So we'll give that a go. I'll take Mora in the fifth round. I do like Mora. I just didn't want to spend a bunch of money on him. I know, too late. There's a whole lot of players here who are like, these are perfectly fine players, but none of them really speak to me. Yeah, you're cheap, Elisha Canada. You can't argue with cheap. Yeah, I'm just not into this draft class. This draft class kind of sucks, actually. I'm going to go ahead and just auto-complete it. Let my scout do his thing.
hopefully by doing the first guy under his slot, we'll have quite a bit of money to try to get um, Chandler signed. Once sixteen million dollars, I'll give you eighteen million. So I have anything better to do with my money this year? Um, here you go. I think you're getting super overpaid, uh, but I have the money, so it's not like it's a bad thing to have it. I guess I could be trying to do things like try to nickel and dime draft these. I just never found it worthwhile. Uh, saving a hundred grand here or there doesn't, even for the A's, doesn't really affect the bottom line in a sufficient enough way for it to be worth my time. And totally unsurprised that he ended up taking that. Who from Oakland is on the roster? Uh, three infielders, which is pretty wild, and Riley Green. Uh, four infielders, Max Muncy, Yoiber Ruiz, uh, Peyton Green, and Jacob Kendall. All made it. Riley Green made it in the outfield. Very nice. No pitchers, but that's cool. Prospects, Figueroa, Alvarado, Oviedo. Alvarado, how close are you to like doing anything meaningful? You're pretty far away. Why are you not even in short season yet? I don't get that. You know what we're going to do? He's never going to get better. Oh, because I marked him and then never fucked with him. That's on me. I'll put him in high A. You know, I completely forgot that I had him on lock. That's entirely my own fault. I have no one to blame but myself there. And uh, Ibarra. You. <sighs> Do I trade you now? That's the question I'm myself asking me myself, because you ain't doing shit in the minor leagues. Like you're not pitching well at all, and it's not going to get any easier. At every single step, you're struggling badly. You're walking way too many people. You're giving up home runs. You're not getting it done. Now, you can argue small sample size. And I think that's a fair argument. But he's on a very short leash. If I don't start seeing some significant improvement by the end of this season, I think he's out. Um, I think we try to recoup our investment elsewhere. Let's go up to the training deadline. Uh, I don't need this old fucker. He is of no interest to me. Really, you piece of shit game? You're gonna fucking hurt my best player this season? I don't really have a shortstop either. Um, probably Ruiz ends up playing short. And I guess we'll call up Johnson too. And Johnson can fill that particular role. Oh, damn, Jacob Kendall won MVP and then got hurt during the game. That's cool. There must just be something about my team that screams, you need mediocre pitching and you need it fast. 
Oh uh, no, I need Ian Anderson. Ian Anderson is actually like a worthwhile pitcher. Mm. Yeah, I'm not taking on your salary just for the lulls. Uh, that doesn't gain me any benefit. All right. So let's take a quick look for our trade deadline. What do we need? I need a closer. I need somebody besides Moran because Moran ain't getting anything done. At least you pulled Yano out of this stupid rule role that you had him in. I think that's going to be very beneficial to this club. But yeah, Moran ain't working out. So I think getting a, a top tier reliever would be a really benef a big benefit to this club. I think also to move on from Moda. I don't think Moda's worth anywhere near what he thinks he's worth, and he's having a really bad year. Because the guy won't stop giving up the long ball. Um, how many walks are you drawing? You're drawing a lot of walks, so you're actually a positive contributor. Almonte ain't getting it done. Gaddison ain't getting it done. We also need a hitter. We always need a hitter. Um, that's always a thing that we need. Muncie's is hitting lots of home runs. That's something. Uh, I actually think Muncie is better than he looks. Um, could be even better, but... I do think he is better than he looks. Uh, let's go ahead. Didn't Muncie get an all-star appearance this year? He did. So let's look at... We definitely want to look at a bat. An impact bat. Either plays right field or DH. I'd like to get a reliever, though. I think a, bull, I think a, a nice closer would be quite beneficial to us. Um, Joe Boyle. I like it. And I can offer you some pretty shitty... Uh, here, you want a 20 out of 20 for a bullpen upgrade? Done. Easy pick. Uh, this is a no. That's a no for me, dog. Interesting. Nobody has a hitter they want to get rid of the contract on. That is somewhat surprising. I don't want Andy Rodriguez. He offers nothing. Eh. Matt Olson doesn't feel like the kind of bat that gets us over the hump. No, Hunter Green makes a lot of money. If I'm taking Hunter Green, I am not paying that much salary. I'll tell you what, Yankos. What happens if you eat all of his salary? Yeah, I'm not going to do it. I am not taking that giant contract off your hands. No, thank you. Um, I don't necessarily just want a guy's only for one year. I would take Vlad Guerrero Jr. so hard, but I'm never going to be able to afford that contract. 
and I know you're not gonna eat enough. You're not gonna eat enough of this contract to make that something I can accept. You're just not going to do it. Um. I mean, it's only one more year, though. What if you retain 50% of his salary? Oh, I see. I'm only getting half salary anyway because the Blue Jays are picking up half of it. But I can't give you I can't give you a good player for it. That's that's where I draw my line. I cannot give you a genuinely good player for that when I might not even have him beyond a year. Um Glaber Torres is fine, I suppose. I might do some, like, targeted shopping of specific players to try to get an upgrade. Yeah, none of this really does it for me. Um, there we go. Um, right, so I need a reliable corner outfield. And I'm willing to trade something decent in order to get it. What if I offered you? Uh, first of all, yeah, Dan Tebow, I think, is on his way out. Uh, just because Silvera is just a better pitcher. Um, what can I trade in order to get ourselves a quality hitter? Oh, God. McGarry should not be in the rotation anymore. I'd rather have Swanson. A thousand percent. I'm going to try to trade Moda for an outfielder and see what that gets me. I will look at any type of player you have to offer as long as they hit ball good. A confidant back? I don't think so. Are you that Tommy Hawk? Um, eh. none of you really do it for me. The offered you McGarry too. Does that give me a better return? It gets you the exact same return. But adds in Hunter Goodman, uh, who's not terrible, but also not good. Uh, it's fine. It's probably as good as I'm going to get. Done. I know any of the fans are such big fans of Griff McGarry, but here we are. So Swanson goes to the big leagues. For sure. And then they probably end up needing relievers, so we'll... Oh, no, we already have a reliever. We have uh, Nubian McGee here and Joe Boyle. Next, I'm going to trade Moran and see if we can get a quality outfielder with him. Okay, I'm definitely seeing more names now. So clearly there's something more enticing about him than the other guys. Okay. So let's start with Gavin Cross. Gavin Cross is a really good all-around hitter. Uh, but he's also fragile, so I'll probably pass on that. Andy Pages is a bit more toward just the raw power side of things. I don't think that's a thing that's that helpful to me. Uh, Pete Carmstrong is an amazing center fielder, but that's about all I can say about him. 
Okay, Leonardo offers elite power, and we don't have that. His contract is pretty redonkulous, though. But maybe. Game, don't do that. I'm negotiating. If you'll eat half his salary, I will offer you something at least mildly interesting. Oviedo could still be something really, really good. I don't giving up something genuinely good, but I'm getting something we don't have, which is a big time power bat. And I think that's incredibly valuable to me. What if I offered you to begin with a uh, fucking Gaddison? All right, now we're speaking my language. I'm going to try to get them to take a little bit more salary. No, that's it. You know what? Fine. Done. This means Mr. Tebow gets to come back, which I'm sure makes him very happy. <clears throat> okay. If I could get rid of Andrew Painter, would I? Mm, maybe. Maybe. Is there... I probably need to give Oviedo an actual chance in the big leagues, don't I? Not just yet, but very, very soon, I think. I think maybe when rosters expand, we'll promote him, give him a chance. Actually, no, Patrick is a finished product. Let's do Oviedo. Let's give him a chance for some meaningful at bats now. Let's see where that gets us. All right, we have moved people around, which is pretty solid. Is there anything else I want for this season? If I could trade Andrew Painter, I would. Something tells me I'm not going to be able to, though. Let's try it. Let's see what kind of offer I could get. Uh, all players, please. Nobody? Okay, that's fine. I think that's it. I don't think I need to fuck around with the trade deadline anymore. I think I got what I wanted. There we go. That's a lot of pieces moving around, but I think it's going to make us a better team at the end of it. Um, I'm not going to force you to start Almonte. I'm going to let you start who you think is appropriate. Okay, so let's do this first. Really? Joe Boyle is a starter? I guess. Um, sure, we can try it.
And I don't mind Mike Swanson getting some low pressure reps uh, before we turn him out to be a full time starter. I don't mind that at all. Uh, okie dokie. Lineups. Let's see how this transforms. So Leonardo takes over and right. That makes perfect sense to me. Oviedo DHs against righties. Linares? Really? I don't know why, though. Katze, you just have these weird obsessions with individual players that I can never fully grasp. I mean, Linares is gone the moment um, Jack, uh, Jacob Kendall can come back, so... Uh, let's just move on, I guess. That was a lot of people getting shuffled around. Um, we'll have to see if it makes any significant differences. Oh, Braden Egan is getting better. That's great. Love that for him. I think Ibarra is on the track to getting treated in the offseason. Oof, Ignacio Flores has just bottomed out to being nothing. I guess. Oh, his uh, he lost his uh, nose potentials. Oh, as a pitcher. Why the fuck are you pitching? Just stop trying. Anyway. Uh, let's advance up to roster expansion day see where what we're looking at oh thank goodness uh get the fuck out of here Lenares. nobody likes you get jacob kendall back that's gonna be a huge shot in the arm We're not scoring consistently, um, which is, you know, par for the course, I suppose. Um, nothing crazy here. Okay. We're right around 500. Uh, we're nothing if not consistent, I suppose. Hey, Joe Boyle's already won five games for us as a starter, so maybe that was the right call, letting him start. Um... Um, do we want to try to keep, uh, Joe Boyle? Oh, you don't like Marcotze. We're going to have a hard time keeping pictures, aren't we? Just because apparently Marcotze doesn't get along with him. That's fine. Anybody want to call up to give some opportunities to? Not really. Hmm. 
Not really. Um, I could always call up a couple more outfielders or Tanner Talk, but I don't really see that being a big difference. I've got to admit, Yoibe Ruiz going from like consolation prize to mainstay of the the infield is not what I expected. Oh, an all star. Let's not forget he was an all star. Um. Okay. Is Jacob Kendall the next guy that gets a, a big contract from us? Maybe. Oh, are you happy now that he is performing at a high level? You're reasonably happy about it. Uh, sure. I'd rather make the fans like me more. Oof. Let's well, have a top six farm system, and we do not. It's, I don't know if I need to just start investing more in scouting or get a better or get a better scout but every like every premium prospect we grab ends up flaming out in like record time anyway let's go ahead and sim up to October uh cool. I'm not sure we're actually making the playoffs this year. We might be. Like, here's the thing. The AL Central is really fucking good this year. Which isn't a, a collection of words I ever thought I would say, but they're all really good this year. Um, so we might not even make the playoffs. I don't know that there's much I can do about that, though. Uh, you'll be back in a week. You won't be. I'm going to shut you down and, uh... I don't have any, like, mid-tier starting pitchers ready. Jonathan Lowe, you're in. Yeah, we just stopped scoring all of a sudden. I don't think we're going to make the playoffs this year. We might, but I don't think we will. Ah, uh, okay. Are you fucking joking? Now I'm definitely not making the playoffs. Uh, why did I spend so much on Skeens and Painter? And some of you told me at the time that it was a stupid idea, and yet I thought I knew better, and clearly I didn't. Oh, damn, Pete Howell has improved rapidly. Oh, let's get him some innings at the end of the season here. And I guess let's try Flores, I suppose. It seems highly unlikely that we make the playoffs. Possible, but unlikely. Uh, oh, Oviedo has really stepped up. Uh, so he definitely approves of his uh, journey to the big leagues. Uh, 
We're seeing some nice improvements, um, which is great. Nice. Okay. Um, do we have any chance at all? It's clearly less than 1% because like we're not even listed here. Like how far back are we in the wild card race? Is there any chance of us like storming the castle, so to speak? We're four games out of a wild card spot. A lot of things that have to go either very right or very wrong for other players for us to make it. And I'm already eliminated. Hilariously, we're one game worse than we were last year. Um... Mm. kind of a disappointing season um but an interesting one i think i think we've made a lot of changes some of which weren't so good others of which actually ended up being very positive for us as a club um oh we can do this super quick Hmm. Not a great international free agent class. And run practice. Congratulations, Cincinnati Reds. Well deserved. Very well deserved. It is an average score. I mean, I literally had an average record, so I don't know what you're complaining about. Um. Dip, 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 International run practice. Oh, Riley Green was a rare bright spot. He is actually really productive, so I think we have to keep him. Uh, so I'm going to go and execute the option, keep him around for one more year. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. We have, we're way over budget, which means we're probably going to have to move a couple players we might not want to move. Uh, that's just has, that, that just is how it has to be. Um, it is what it is. How close are we to making a profit and making him happy? We're 8 million under budget, so we're going to have to trim a fair bit of salary here. Or just cut player development, which I really don't want to do, but I will if I have to. Anyway, um, yeah, let's break down the season. Talk about what went well, what didn't go well. Um, for all the contracts I've signed that have bitten me in the ass, Peyton Green has just been insanely good value for us. We got him at the perfect time. He turned in his best year yet. 
He drove play. Everything you want in a player he provided. Jacob Kendall, our first big rookie, came in. Had a pretty good 2029 and then followed up with an all-star campaign in 2030. Uh, great season. Top-tier hitter. Uh, how are you defensively? You're good enough. You're not brilliant, but you're good enough. I do think your future is probably better suited for second base. But that's pretty good. Max Clark had his best offensive year yet. I think he's he was a big reason why our offense took off this year in a way it hasn't in the past. Uh, but it also makes him nearly impossible to keep. We'll see, though. Uh, Riley Green was an excellent free agent pickup. Um, couldn't be happier about that. Yoy Bear Ruiz, we fucking pick up off the scrap heap and turns into, like, one of our better players. Uh, Iverson Leonardo. This number has to be closer to this number, but there's still a lot to like here. Um, and for a fairly inexpensive salary, too, because we're not paying all of it. Mike Neely took a turn uh, for the worst. Anthony Siegler was fine, given we've gone out of catchers recently. Uh, this is one of our bigger issues, though. Max Muncy. For the amount of money we pay him, I can't have him hitting 222. That can't be an option for him. I think we have to move on from him, which really sucks because the fans are going to get grumpy as shit about that. But they're going to have to deal with it. Uh, we're also going to lose our captain. Uh, and that's also not going to be easy. But I think it has to be done. Also, apparently, Ariel Lamonte is a big fat jerk, so we can maybe improve countries by getting rid of him. But yeah, I don't think we can keep Max Muncy. I think that's... It's a bridge too far for us. Pitching-wise, thank you, Ian Anderson, for stabilizing the rotation at an incredibly cheap price. Uh, another big home run, relatively seeking in free agency. That's really going to help us out quite a bit. Andrew Painter turned in his best season. Still hardly amazing, but his best season yet. Joe Boyle was a nice pickup. Um, decent years out of the bullpen. Uh, Mike Swanson didn't really get that many meaningful innings, so I'm certainly not going to write him off yet, but we definitely need to see a lot more from him next year. Um, yeah, the pitching staff was fine, but it was hardly sensational. And I think that's the next big growth area, is going to be finding uh, the right pitchers and keeping the other pitchers healthy. Uh, Paul Skeens at the end of the season, losing him hurt. Braden Egan was replacement level. Skeens was better than that, but not by much. Um, yeah, I fucked up, guys. I fucked up hard. Painter's contract, not as much, but Skeens, definitely. Um, I think I got excited for what he could be, and I over-invested for potential. Um, so that's... Uh, a big L that I hung on myself. Uh, but Muncie is almost certainly gone. Clark is probably gone. Uh, and we're going to find replacements for both of them. Um, yeah. It be like that sometimes. Um, yes, we're going to lose a few people here and there. That's whatever. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. So let me know what you think. Um, I wonder if we could move Skeens. Almost, no, we can't because he's injured. So that's kind of a non-starter. Um, you know what? If Paul Skeens was his rookie year, his contract would be a bargain deal. And then he's just settled into this mid-tier tier like he's basically a good number three or low number two and he's being paid like an ace um what does Scotty report on him say 
Yeah, it says he's pretty decent. Dish sure makes up for a lot of mistakes, though. Does Peyton Green's contract. That's very exciting to me. Peyton Green? No, we traded for him. He's not, uh, he's not a, um... Mr. Green here doesn't count as a drafted product. Um, so he doesn't count. Jacob Kennel is going to get real expensive real soon. That's going to have to be an interesting decision here. I would laugh my ass off if Paul Skeens opted out, but maybe he turns in a couple of big years in 31 and 32 and prices himself out of our price range. If that happens, I'd actually be pretty happy about that. Um, I'd actually be pretty, pretty pleased. However, friends, that's going to conclude for today's episode. I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, please remember to like and subscribe. Click the bell if you want to be notified when I produce new videos. And comment down below your thoughts about the team and how we can make it better. Besides not signing people to contracts. Apparently I should not be allowed to sign anyone to a long-term contract. Well, maybe one or two years of treat. Uh, but until then, this has been F Guardian. Thank you for watching. And I bid you good day.